has been taking these these more traditional mid lane power picks. We saw him on the Azir in the only game the Giants were able to win. Rocket are going to immediately answer with the Aatrox. Ooh, I like that for Prophet. So it's, so it's not necessarily that same Vladimir in the top lane. I feel like we've also seen uh, Aatrox flexed around a bit in different regions around the world. So I'm going to hold my breath a little bit on saying where exactly that's going to be going. But Memento now on the Camille to match Joko in the early game and make those plays himself is a strong look for Memento so far. Not to mention a lot of playmaking combined. You can look at that Aatrox as well. Now over to Giants. We talked about how Steelback has All been right. picking these older AD carry style champions. We now see the Zyra Khan. This was an old favorite back in the spring split. But Steelback and Sir Nuxalot. They're a newer duo. It's definitely true. Sir Nukes a lot coming in this split, and I, I think that this draft for me is very exciting because it's a complete departure from what Giants have played so far this split. It's not late game king anymore, baby. No, no, no. Zion Rakan is very much about a strong 2v2 laning phase. Zoe really comes online in that mid game, and I'll be excited to see how Giants can play around those big power spikes. And this is really important because Giants' bottom lane, compared to what Rocket has been able to do over the last two weeks, has not really shown us as much to be confident about. Rocket, on the other hand, they're going all in on this wow. damage dealing we have the Aurelia locked that is three carries for Rocket in phase one of the picks and now we have a trundle band away it's back over to Giants Gaming it's a powerful draft out of Rocket three of the best champions in their positions uh, a lot of carry potential on these individual members and that's sort of been a trend that we've seen with Rocket when they'll put profit on a carry memento on something as well and just let every single member of this team even if it's North Scarin playing those playmakers like the pike yeah, and it's still open, by the way. When we talk about a couple of supports getting banned, the Morgana's taken away. The bans have been a pretty interesting one for me this game, especially the Morgana uh, taken away was a surprise. Now, Rocket, they have a few more seconds to decide what their final will be. It's going to be the Skarner. So Joko won't have a chance to get his hands on that one. There actually been a number of jungle picks. Yeah, they're just taking away all of these early game playmakers and all these strong jungle picks here for Joko. Good front line as well. Won't be the case for him this time around necessarily. The other pick that I might look at for Joko, if he wants to be making those plays in the early game, would be the Xin Zhao. It's one of the only champions that can actually duel 1v1 up against the Camille in the early game, and is definitely one of those big playmakers for him. That's true. Now the pike is removed. Rocker going to have to decide on a different type of supporting champion. And you want to talk about oh making plays. Hey. Let's get ready to praise the sun, baby. Leona's locked in. Four melee champs from Rocket. This is my favorite part of the meta. It's that, all about the Goon Squad. This is going to be a death ball. Rocket are looking very scary right now. I want to see what they finalize this composition with, the pick for EQ. But Giants have to flesh their comp out right now. The Sejuani makes a, a fair bit of sense. It's been increasing in popularity. And uh, post six, the ganks can get pretty scary. Yeah, we're definitely going to be looking for a strong bottom laner here for HeQ. When you pick the Leona, you're not trying to farm it out through that laning phase. You are very much trying to fight against the Zyra Khan duo at level six. I wonder almost if he'd, he'd go for something like the Draven to really just go all in on this early game strategy. All right, we got our final pick in for Giants. This is a Jax locked in for Ruin. Now, the final question as to be answered, you're pointing out, Ender, the AD carry choice. What is HeQ going to do? This guy has had some monster performances in the short two weeks we've had in the ULCS summer. Eight oh, it's the left. Teemo. The crowd is it's the, the Teemo. Teemo. <laughs> It's not the team. No, it, we, you Ooh. talked about Vladimir. It and, could be uh, the Vlad bot lane, though. It's Ooh, Vlad bot lane. I really like this. So he said something that could kill at level six. Well, put a giant circle of blood, put a giant circle of light down on top of this poor steel bag. It's got really dark souls all of a sudden. Yeah, it, it's it's pretty metal Sorry, blood down here in the bad. bottom lane. Oh, man, but I, I do like this out of HeQ. Uh, definitely going for this strong mid-game team fighting team with some of the strongest champions across the board in every position for Rocket. Okay, yeah, an insane draft out of these guys, and there's so much carry potential, a ton of damage. We've seen what, what Vladimir can do uh, in the top lane, in the AD carry position as well, as it's been flexed around, around the world, in fact. But I'm also super hyped on this Aurelia in the mid lane. If Memento's making some trips there early on, this early laning phase that, that Aurelia can sometimes suffer in, I'm not sure up against a Zoe, that could not be so much of a problem this time. And Zoe is one of the more vulnerable champions, I'd say, in the mid lane. Even though you look at her kit at face value, she's got the, the blink with her ultimate. She has to go straight back to that original position, so it becomes very easy to land your skill shots here for blink with those blades, get the stun, and look for the all-ins. It's definitely a lane that Memento will be visiting very early on in this match. Oh, do not doubt it. Now, let's see if Joko can try and match out the pressure. This is one. He's going to have a little bit of a slower start. Giants, you can see some of the scaling potential for these guys. That Jax, that is one of the more famous top lane scalers of ages yeah. past. We'll see if Giants Gaming have enough 
to survive that early game. The powerhouses that Team Rocket are breaking out in this game. Both these teams definitely want to find a win, but Giants, they're the hungrier team. Remember, these guys have not picked up a win since week one, when they had to backdoor the base with Betsy. It was the Betsy 1v9 show on that Azir, but now the whole draft has changed. A lot of people were calling for changes in the draft, and that is exactly what we're seeing so far in this game. Steelback and Sir Nukesalot could be a much larger focus, I feel like, for Giants in this time around. I think that's entirely fair. Jungle matchup is going to be a very important one. Most of the matchups, but in general, Memento, he stepped up huge last week. The guy was making some incredible plays. We'll have to see if Joku is able to match the pressure, and I don't know if he can do it on the Sejuani. There were some buffs to Sejuani on patch 8-12. Of course, the, uh, the E stun damage that you get is a little bit lower, but there's no cooldown on individual monsters, so the actual jungle clear is a little bit swifter, and that makes it a little bit easier to match up against the early game pressure of a Camille in the early game. Yeah, that is always a fair amount of pressure, too. Now, also, it's worth noting that uh, even though everyone in Solo Queue has been uh, experiencing the new Aatrox, uh, this is Aatrox Classic, if you will, uh, for still another couple of weeks. Yeah, and that's the new Aatrox, dear to my soul, tested that for a, hey, for a very no long time. I know, it's, it's sad, but you know what? He'll, he's just a little misunderstood right now. What you're saying is he'll, he'll, he'll grow out of that phase and he'll he have will. a high win rate eventually. Exactly. Okay, good. That's, that's what happens with Play a lot of new logic. champions, you feel like. But uh, this version of Aatrox very much focused on those auto attacks. I, I think I talked about this Jax versus Aatrox matchup specifically in uh, last week's couple of games, uh, where it very much is focused around this Jax scaling up. It gives him a little bit of a freer laning phase. And then once you get to two items in the side lane, Jax very much should be able to win out in the split push. Excelente. All right, let's take a look at how this matchup ends up going in the early game. Uh, not so much in the top. I do want to focus in on that bottom because, as you pointed out, it's going to be all about Hiku and Norskaren trying to get the kills off early onto Steelback and Nukesalot. But the Zyra Khan, you know, we've seen Rakan kind of solo for a while. On the opposite side, Norskaren's been doing it, but uh, it looks like the birds are back together again. Yeah, we, we love to see it. And actually, in a couple of other re regions, we've seen the Zyra Khan played as that hyper carry strategy with a funneling gold into the Zaya out of the jungle. But this matchup with the bottom lane is a little interesting for me because I think that there is room for mistakes to be made by the Vladimir player in the early game. So Sir Nukeslot could potentially find plays, but once that level six rolls around, the burst damage of an electrocute Vladimir is pretty nuts. Yeah, that's going to be the time we want to watch. Now, yes, of course, we have uh, devoted members of uh, the Church of Skullcrab in the audience. They love their Skullcrab. So I don't know why they cheer when it dies, though. That's just sad. It's pretty messed up. Yeah. I wonder if they know. Uh, well, I guess it's, it's they're counting on the fact that he comes back. Or she. It is a she. It I believe she. confirmed in the lore. And uh, Rift Herald also is a corrupted scuttle crab by the Void. So we should be hearing more cheers when that one goes down. Uh, we got some time on the board before that happens, of course. Now, Prophet is getting pushed back a little bit behind Ruin. And we do want to keep an eye on how the junglers are going back and forth. Want to focus a little in on Joko as he goes towards the mid lane here. But this is only a level three Sejuani. Blank, he's not really far out of the way. And Memento, he's looking to catch on the other side. Memento himself, of course, had a pretty stellar week last time around, putting up some pretty impressive numbers. Yeah, Memento looked really good, specifically on the Trundle pick, if I remember correctly. Top lane's getting pretty spicy. Oh, Numbers. that was a leap and a half. Yeah. In profit and ruin. Had a flash. Yeah, all right, we'll talk a little bit more about Memento in just a second, because it looks like KQ Norskaren tried to duke it out with Steelback Nukes a lot. It's still dangerous to go all in on the Zyra Khan. Definitely is, especially when you're running the teleport. That doesn't give you much safety when it comes down to these early all-ins before you have the Feather Storm as that Zaya. But still, I, I think it is very interesting to focus in here on Memento because he had been kickstarting everything for Rocket. So far, this entire split has been such a strong playmaker for the team and really made a name for himself. Jumped out of that shell a little bit, I feel like, this time around. Yeah, and, and in Split's past, you know, he had struggled with trying to take on the mantle of leadership. He yeah. was very vocal about how it was it was a difficult time for him to, you know, to become that, that mature leader in, in a team full of kind of eclectically mixed players on Rocket, if, if we're honest. But these guys, they, they were able to surprise last Split, that playoff berth that they secured for themselves. Honestly, Memento getting better and better, and he's finally showing it. I want to see if he can keep that kind of pressure up. He has the tools to do it. Camille's a champion that can certainly carry. Absolutely, and I think uh, a big reason why he is allowed to step up to the plate a little bit more is because Norskaren has been all over the map. In the in the first week of play, he played Pike and the Rakan, two big playmakers here for Rocket, and it made it a lot easier for him and Memento just to go all the way across the map and make plays together. And now he's back on that Leona, and I expect very much to see more of the same. 
I want to see more of week one or Scarin because yeah, yeah week two, those plays. week two he picks up the Tom Kench a couple times, and I mean he didn't. Boring. He he really. I only remember him doing one Abyssal Voyage, and that was like bringing HQ to his death. So so let's see let's see more week one or Scarin and see what happens. I do like the Leona pickup. He's such an aggressive player. Yeah, and Memento now, I, I really like what he's doing as well with this deep vision around the top side of the map to set him up to take the Scuttle Crab because he has priority in both solo lanes at the moment. That makes it much easier for him to get around the map, put down that deep vision, and keep them safe from potential early movements from Joka. It'll be a little bit tougher for him, for sure. Let's see if Rocket's bottom lane can keep this push on going. Now, it's fairly early, uh, or sorry, it's fairly even still in the bottom lane, but the mid lane is where things are starting to come apart at the seams here early on for Rocket. You see how punished Blank was by that uh, sleepy trouble bubble from the Zoe. Had to back a little bit uh, inopportune timing and ended up picking up the Merc Treads as a first item. Yeah, he's been getting chunked out pretty heavily so far by Betsy in that middle lane. It has not gone all too well for him. As actually top lane ruined. He's going down and on. All right, here goes Prophet, and Whoa. in comes Memento out of nowhere. That was it's a one-two punch for First Blood. I loved that out of Memento. Fantastic hook shot through the wall right there. And Ruin, he's playing pretty near to his turn. He doesn't think he's going to get ganked, and that Flash has no chance getting out. He got ruined. Uh, yeah, that was a really nice hey. play by Memento. Excellent stuff here, and you know, good start out for Rocket, getting that gold a little bit ahead of the game. That's 800 in their favor. Let's take a look at the play. And there's control war here too, so Ruin really believes that he's completely safe, but as Prophet goes in, the leap strike back in, that's the death sentence. Memento is waiting, and look at the distance he clears through that wall. The hookshot will cheat you through that a little bit as mid lane. Okay, here comes Joko trying for some revenge in the mid. It's not gonna happen. Blank is able to get out of harm's way. We're hearing a lot of off-screen damage being dealt. Not sure where that's coming from, but I uh, want to look into that. Yeah, I believe that's over on the blue buff. It, uh, it's a bloodbath over there trying to take Blood that one down. Blue buff. Blank. Yeah, a lot of bees. Do that five times fast. <laughs> that would not be easy. Uh, but I, I, I want to highlight that gank in the top lane because we talked a little bit about how Jack should win out later if things go neutrally, but Memento has already thrown a wrench into that plan just a little bit. If Aatrox does get an advantage in this lane, it's very important because a lot of the damage from these guys is just all in those auto attacks, so whoever has the better itemization is usually going to win out. There's very little room for outplay, I feel like, in that 1v1. Uh, definitely could be a tough one for Ruin as the game goes on, and we'll see if Memento decides to stick around there for the time being. The game has settled just a little bit after a couple of attempts here and there, and I want to take the time to remind you guys that tickets for the EU LCS Finals in Madrid on the 8th and 9th of September are now available. If you go to eu.lolisports.com, you can pick those up. We'll see you in Madrid. That'll be a good show. Oh, it certainly will be. <laughs> and I remember the first, uh, first show that I went to with the EU LCS back in Madrid, 2015 spring. What an excellent time. Fnatic versus Uniforms. That would be, that's a good one. Yeah, well, if, dude, if it's anything like that again, it's going to be great. And I think with the way the teams are right now, we are certainly going to have some high-level League of Legends come September. Yeah, here's that level six, though, from HeQ. Remember, he has the Electrocute. He's getting into that Spellbinder as quickly as he possibly can. There's so much damage for this duo in the bottom lane. Fortunately, Norskaren's only level four, so it's going to be a little bit harder to make plays. But now Rocketers bowling around with their stronger soul laners to get this crap. Yep, 1v3. I don't know if the crowd can survive. Unfortunately, it's, it's taken down. The crowd even wants it. Uh, and Rocket, though, haven't been able to find the kills down towards the bottom side. This is the start of it. This is where the damage starts to come in, as you were pointing out. That Spellbinder is very close to completing. But they don't want to go all in just yet. Norskaren still doesn't have his ultimate. No access there. Sir Nukes a lot. Not too far behind him either. Yeah, and remember that Giants are pretty happy with this game state. Even though they did draft a little bit more towards that early game, Koops was saying all they want to do is make it through that early, make it to the mid, make it to the late game, where we do know they have had moments of brilliance in the past. So as far as a team goal going into this week, making it through the first 10 minutes of the game, only down, you know, about 1,000 gold, is, is a market improvement, I think, from the last few weeks of play. And a really crucial part of making it through the early game, I, I feel, does have to be in that AD position. Steelback has had uh, some, you know, okay, but not sub or not optimal numbers. Yeah, it, it hasn't looked great for Steelback, and you know, I, I will say the community is usually very critical of Steelback. Apparently, they're all hard stuck Silver Five. Though. <laughs> Apparently, I mean, I thought everyone on Reddit was Challenger, but maybe that's just you know crossing the line. That's only somewhere. an NA. Oh, that, see, that would make sense. Yeah. No, but, but let's let's switch things up a little bit, though, because there is definitely some rays of sunshine here for the Giants. True. Because Betsy is able to go 1v9. And speaking oh, of uh, 2v2, oh, oh, oh. hello, DQ. He goes down. That was really, really quick. And that's what I was talking about, the mistakes you can make as this Vladimir. 
if the Rakan just finds that engagement, it blows up in his face before he gets a chance to use the pool. And he did not have access to any other summoner spells to escape. Wow. The Flash would have been the only one, but he gets insta-gibbed on that. And yeah, this is this is looking good for Giants, the fact that they can make that happen against the kill lane. Yeah, I mean, if you can not only not lose the early game, but actually win it, that's even better. But do you have to be careful, because Ruin, the last time he left strike forward, uh, it, it, you know, he was punished. Memento was right there, ready to gank him. And I think that both junglers really have been playing around this top side of map, because that's where the summoners were down for quite some time. And they're trying to protect their own split pushers, because that's a major win condition for both these sides later in the game. Yeah, now let's let's go back. Uh, Joko hanging around up towards the top side. Let's go back and take a look at this play one more time because I don't think Kiku had oh. any idea that it was coming. It's just the bush control. It's so good. And I mean, there's just absolutely no chance from the charm into the knockup. There's no opportunity for EQ to get any single button press off. I and mean, we questioned, you know, these guys, they've not been playing together as long as, you know, Steelback was with the Targamus for a while. Uh, and question marks around how well he'd be able to jive with, with Sir Nukes a lot. Well, clearly it's not been an issue this game. So Giants Gaming, they effectively equalize on the gold game, and uh, they also win the moral victory of the Skellic Crab. Yeah, that'll shut Reddit up real quick. Steal back in the kill and the 2v2 down the bottom. Uh, that's true. That's a, that's, <laughs> that's really what this is about. We are really just like, just taking off everybody on the internet. This is great. <laughs> but I want to go back to Betsy. We, we only had a second for him on the graphic, and he has been uh, pretty much dominating blank, at least the farm game, keeping him down. And he has been far and away Giants' best player this split so far. I mean, the damage share, especially for me, 31 or 37 percent rather. That's a whole heck of a lot. More than one third his team's total damage and kill participation as well. He is all the focus of this team. When people are being killed, he is right there in the mix of things, making it happen. Always giving him playmaker to do it as well. So this is why the Zoe working out well for him. And you know, we talked about how Giants will have their work cut out for him to get through some of this terrifying damage dealing, multiple carry threat rock out composition, but they've been able to hang tough, hang even. This is the kind of thing that Koobs is saying they need to be able to do so they can get to that late game where uh, he has styled himself as the king. Yeah, I mean, it's going great for them as Scare goes in. All right, there we go. Now it's time for a little bit of revenge. Oh. They can nuke a lot. There's a teleport coming oh. in a little bit late, but they do take the Rakan down. However, Ruin, he goes in, leap strike, gets the stun, Memento tags back in. Joko. And Joko is even coming to this party, but it's a Hextech ultimatum. That is going to be the Sejuani ultimate just dodged away from in comes Betsy. Teleport coming in. Everyone's in this party, and it looks like Prophet is not able to get Steel back down for just a second. This is absolutely insane. But the Bloodwell is coming back up, and Prophet, he might be going back down in just a second. Everyone's just playing in there. Blank throws down the Vanguard's Edge. That's going to be the end of that fight, but everyone got involved. Yeah, Blank just got there at the very last second, but Rocket, very impressive from them because they immediately blew Sir Nukes a lot up. It made that a four versus four, even though their mid laner was so far away from the rest of the fight. Yeah, kudos for Rocket staying tough and, and pretty much just making the moves exactly where they needed to. Everyone's teleport except Steelbax, who was already in that fight, got burned. And we got to take a look at this again one more time. It is an absolute bloodbath. This is what I'm talking about. This bottom lane so explosive. Immediate CC. Again, it's this chain CC where Sanuxalot has no chance to actually escape from that with his life. And it looks bad for Rocket at this point because mid lane priority is in the favor of Giants. Both Joko and Betsy are on the way, but they're just not quite able to take out North Scare. All the summoner spells blown from Rocket by time for Prophet to get back into the fight. And now we're actually going to see Memento going up top. We're not done just yet. Right after Ruin does get Counter-Strike on. The flashing forward trying to follow him through, desperately trying to get back to his own tower. But this is not about wow. the tower. It's about the kills. And Prophet picks one up. No mercy from Memento right there. Again, using his flash off a of cooldown, it seems like, to bully Ruin up here in this top lane. And you'll notice that turret is getting very, very low. So should be easy business. And Memento just wants to make one more return trip up there. They should be able to knock that down. Yeah, towers have been uh, the objectives you take once everyone defending them is dead. PQ and Norskaren still keeping the pressure on down towards the bottom side. It's free push in the mid for blank because Betsy is duoing it out with Joko. So Rocket pulling ahead once again, despite the fact that Giants had a pretty impressive fight earlier on or pretty impressive play earlier on. Rocket are making sure to keep him on the back foot. You can't count Giants out just yet, though, because bottom lane, major CS lead for Steelback. Mid lane as well is where it really has gotten quite large. Betsy has just been doing such a good job of laning one versus one against blank. The issue for Giants is going to be their turrets, because top lane's already been taken down. Bottom lane is below 50%. And now with this advantage they have from the top lane, they can just roam profit around the map and take down these turrets wherever they see fit. Well, we'll see. What's the next move here? 
or rock at, where they decide to actually put that pressure with the one tower already taken. Now, Jax is going to be sitting up in the top. Ruin is going to be pretty happy just scaling it up, scaling it up. He wants to be that side pusher. That's what Jax does best. But Rocket have been giving him a bit of a hard time, so he's been a little bit further behind. Now, we take a look at how Rocket have actually played these games out. It's a good thing that they have a lead right now. They tend to win when they have the leads, and they tend to lose when they don't, which makes sense, I suppose. That, that does make a lot of sense, especially in a meta like this, where it feels like the early game very much dictates the end game, because end game happens around 25 to 30 minutes, and there's not much recourse for teams that try to stall it out for the late, hence the 1-3 record over on the side of Giants. But it's still not quite as large a lead I feel like we're used to seeing Raka have when they do have the lead at 15 minutes. And that's, I think, due to the fact that what you said is really key there. They don't necessarily need to stall it out because they've been matching Rocket blow for blow. But here we go. Another one, Vanguard's Edge. And whoa, in comes the Rakan. Let's see if Blank is going to survive this one. Everyone's on top of him, but his team has got his back. And it looks like Giants are coming down with a bad case of Hemo Plague, or at the very least, Ruin is. And the rest of Giants are sent packing. Great punish there from Rocket. They did lose that middle lane turret, though, but the team fighting from Rocket is looking so good. The AoE Wombo combo with Vlad, Aurelia, and Leona just layering it perfectly, it seems. This is why we we're so excited to see this comp <laughs> composition in action, Ender, and it, it feels so good to see Rocket executing it. These guys are confident. Yeah, I do want to highlight, though, Giants uh, made a pretty good play here. They were actually bringing over Ruin from the top and sacrificed minions so they could get this turret. Unfortunately, in order to do that, they did have to sacrifice one member, and all of Rocket are going in while Ruin's like, man, I'm just, I'm taking one for the team. I lost the minions in the top lane, and I'm going to lose my life just so they can get that turret. Yeah, I'm telling you, Jax is allergic to team fighting. Um, I've seen enough Jax's TPN and then just die. It's like, but, I'm not uh, worth any money, take me. It's fine, you can side push. That's what I do when I, when I play top lane. Yeah, you're one of the split push guys, never good team. Why do you think I play Singe? Oh, that is a great question. I'm just you're a not a very target. good person. <laughs> <laughs> I never said I was. That is toxic. <laughs> uh, quite literally. Um, all right, well, Giants are going to be able to push down on the bottom, but they need another wave of minions to do it, so they'll be stalled out for just a second. And of course, for all you Scuttle fans, well, two for the price of one. We've it's got a bargain. the big one taken down and the little soon to follow. Excellent. So this is this is interesting from Rocket because they do lose their turret in the bottom lane. Right now, this means that Giants actually have the turret lead, but because Rocket did get that Rift Herald, they're banking on the fact that they'll be able to use that to break this mid lane tower. And the mid lane tower is so important because it lets you then go into the enemy jungle. It makes it so much easier to put down the deep vision without the threat of being collapsed. So Giants are also able to secure the first dragon of the game. That is going to be the Ocean picked up. Last hit courtesy of Steelback. So Giants really doing a great job keeping pace with Rocket, despite the fact that their fights haven't been quite as good. I feel like they're playing the map just a little bit better. Yeah, I, I really like what I'm seeing out of them right now, and I think that in the coming minutes, we want to look at how they set up the vision around the map, because with the Zoe and the Sejuani, it means that you do have pretty good potential to pick off individual members. And when you look at Rocket's team, with a few solo laners like Blank and Prophet, those guys want to be going into the side lanes on the map. And that means there's a lot more movement around where you can catch people on rotation if you're Giants. And now is really the time to fight, too, because the item spikes are starting to come through now. On the Rocket side, we've got the Trinity Force over for the Aurelia, but you look at what Giants have packing. Bessie has himself the Ludens. Echo, we have a Storm Razor picked up by Steelback. That sexy new item. I saw your eyes <laughs> light up, Mr. Playtester. Yeah, I like that new item. So uh, the interesting thing about Storm Razor is that, you know, a lot of people give it a bad rap for not being a good first item. It actually is a, a pretty solid first item. It does give you more damage than the other options, gives you attack damage and attack speed, which is a winning combination. The issue is that it delays your Infinity Edge until third, because with Storm Razor, you're not getting the crit chance, you need a zeal item then to follow after that. So you're not going to be the big team fight monster that we know Marksman can be until they have the zeal item and the infinity edge on top of that, which comes pretty late into the game. Especially considering uh, how fast games are ending these days, but the way it's going right now, back and forth, I could see Steelback having that three item spike in a little while. We are getting closer and closer to that 20 minute mark, and that means Baron Nash will be spawning on the rift, but Giants gaming, making sure that half, their half of the map, I should say, is actually pretty clear of Rocket Vision waiting and baiting in this death rush, but nobody's coming to check it. In fact, the farthest person pushed on the map is Blank, and he's solo pushing on the side, which is going to prompt Ruin to come and join him. Yeah, you're looking over at Rocket. I think it's funny how Giants are playing the game as well, too, because they're walking around with four members in a, in a huddle, looking for a pick, looking for some kind of a fight, jumping onto Rocket out of the fog of war. And Ruin, a lot of time, isn't even a sideline. Actually, Prophet gets caught. Oh, that one was a pretty easy glacial person to hit, and they instantly delete Prophet off 
the surface of Summoner's Rift. Nicely played by Giants with the collapse. And exactly how they should be playing this style of team. Because Prophet, he goes bot lane, pushes out the wave, wants to group up with the rest of his members, and all of a sudden finds a Joko and the rest of Giants sitting in the bush to pick him off. Yep. Once again, the blow for blow continues. It's two to four in kills. We crest that 20 minute mark with nigh but a 400 gold difference. And as you say it, Ruin picks Finally. up his Infinity Edge, which means it's split push time. It's Trinity Force. Pretty Force, what I say? <laughs> Infinity Edge. That oh, would be a bold I first item. That was stuck in my head, apparently. <laughs> that is one of those costly items, though. Yeah. But took Ruin long enough to pick that one up. Three deaths was tough for him. But I, I do, I do want to give him some benefit of the doubt. Because while he has been picked on by Memento, a lot of his plays have given Giants the opportunity to keep the gold very, very even. Because he's been the one grouping up with his team before Profit. Very true. Well, Profit kind of wishes he was grouping with the team after that. He was trying play. to that one time, and yeah. things did not end well for him. Had to pop the Rift Herald. It was going to be soon to expire, so down bottom will be where Rocket decided to spend it. The tower in the mid, of course, still stands, and that's usually where teams try to go for it, but it seemed to be pretty well defended by Giants, although not currently. Yeah, I'm less of a fan of using the Herald in the bot lane. They really shouldn't be able to get this turret mid either. They do have four oh, members pings. here, but the rest of Giants are on their way to make uh, this. Oh, yeah. Shoot. Rocket got a little spooked on yep. that one. I think they realized that although they've been out fighting Giants, uh, that's not going to happen forever, nor was it by that much. Yeah, especially because, I mean, the gold, like, 800 doesn't really mean that much. I think Steelback is feeling in a very good position. Betsy as well just finished the Morel Anomic on, so lots of damage going to come through from that champion. Like the way you pronounced it. That's Morel a good one. Morel <laughs> Yeah, it's very musical. Oh, yeah. But, uh, I mean, if you're looking for picks, that's the item you want to be going for. Here we go. go. Speaking of picks, there we go. Let's see. Memento is able to tumble away, but the rest of Rocket, not sure if they want this fight. A little on different pages. Or Scarin forced to flash away. There's not a lot of escape options for Leo. So Giants burning a lot of summoner spells and a few ultimates to boot. Yeah, it was a trade right there. Flash for flash on both supports as well as the ulti there from Sir Nukes a lot. So it be fairly even overall. But I think a lot of Giants playmaking comes from this Rakan. Now it's going to be much more up to Joko to be fishing there with the Glacial Prisons to make plays, which might honestly happen right here. There we go. Let's see. Oh, they put down a very clutch pair of wards. Immediately turn the 1A into Memento spooky. and Blank. Yep, could have been a uh, bloodbath once again in this mid lane. It really has been where all the team's action has been. Now for Rocket, waiting, I feel like, for HeQ to hit his second iron. Profit as well, once he gets that Ginsu's Rage Blade. Split pushing becomes a dream situation for Aatrox. With the Titanic Hydra, he can clear waves very easily. And with that Phantom hit on the auto attacks, means that that sustain is going to be coming through much sooner on the heal and really make him a menace in the side lane against Ruin. For the time being, Rocket are mostly trying to do the same thing Giants have been doing for a little while, except it's all about trying to secure the vision of the Baron. But there are several Giants wards placed down in there, and it's so hard for them to get any points of ingress with this mid tower still standing tall. And now it's Rocket, the ones that are grouping up as five members and getting priority around this middle lane. Betsy, though, he does have to be careful because all of Rocket seem like they want to make the a wards, pick happen. The wards are bait. Oh, man. Joko? Joko? He's getting awfully close to that brush. Oh, they didn't pull the trigger. It, I mean, it was a little dangerous, still, and you don't necessarily sure, want to be sure. ganking the tank. It's uh, definitely a bold play out of Rocket, but I've seen them do crazier things. Blank does sidestep the Sleepy Trouble Bubble. No getting caught today now. Game's still fairly stable at the moment. A lot of, a lot of attention being paid towards the mid, but it's been a slow push and pull in the side lanes. Ruin on one side, Blank on the other. Yeah, Giants reset a few members. Rocket take control of the mid lane. Rocket reset a few members. Giants retake control over this barren area. And this is sort of the window now where Giants are looking to make a play because they've got the vision control. They're going to be sitting in a brush just trying to chunk out anyone that steps too close from them on Rocket's side. Well, no one's stepping too close at the moment, but there are no minions, so they actually can't see just one down. Profit? Stepping closer to Ruin, that's a 1v1 I'd like to see for sure. Now, here we go, the giant siege commences. Sir Nukeslot around the side, Memento and Norskarin trying to defend, but they're not able to make it happen. Ruin even comes up for the ceremonial tap. Takes down the tower, so Giants get off scot-free. That's interesting, because usually teams don't get inner turrets for free right there. Rocket had sort of split the map up with their solo laners in the side lanes, and that meant that there wasn't a whole lot of wave clear to actually take that down. And of course, with a few ranged champions, Giants can hit that turret with relative ease. But now Rocket are the ones with the two item spikes. The Rapidons completed in the bottom lane, Steric's gauge as well for blank. 
it's it's their turn, I feel like, now to try and make the proactive play themselves. Got to do something right now, sniffing around the Baron, but they're actually not going to go for it. Instead, they just try and clear out some vision. Everyone from Giants have backed away after taking the Cloud Dragon. It feels like Rocket are unsure of their next move right now, Ender. It's definitely slowed down. That gold is dead on even between these two teams. And even though we said for Giants it's about getting through the early game, they're the, they're the team that wants to take it late. They've always been talking about how they want to go for the team fights in the late game. Well, and that's very true, but Rocket are the team that actually does take it a little bit later than them. They're the I mean, longest fair, average game time in the summer. To be fair, play. that's because Giants have uh, lost a few more games, so the they average lose game fast. time has gone yeah, yeah, lower a little bit. But this one you might be in for the long haul because there hasn't been much happening, has there? No, I mean, it's very fair. In terms of kills, how the way the game started, most of these kills happened right. in the first five, ten minutes of it. So this is a very interesting game state at the moment. You see a few more item spikes being completed. We, we hadn't talked about it, but Hiku had picked up his death cap as well. Uh, in the mid lane, Blank, you know, adds to his Trinity Force. He gets the Sterex Gauge. Start to see some of these damage dealers come a little bit more online. There's still a lot of threat here, but as the game gets later on Rocket's side, Ender, who is the primary threat in your eyes? Oh, it's, it's, it's got to be Steelback, right? When you have a, a, a traditional marksman, their late game team fighting DPS is just strictly going to be higher than any other class of champion. And now that he's got the rapid fire cannon and is working towards the infinity edge, once that big third power item comes through, that's when he's going to start ripping through these members on Rocket. And that was the question we asked at the beginning of the day. like. Will they be able to set up Steelback for that success? Now, he's also set himself up for, uh, for a very comfortable game because he's picked up his favorite item, QSS. Yeah, that he came up first, by the way. He got his second, so yeah. I'm, I'm proud of him for learning. He got it right after that Storm Razor. Really wanted that first item spike, but really, he's got he's to look out for Norse Scaring. That ultimate, if that catches him out, he's going to be in serious trouble. So while he is paying the price a little bit right now, it'll pay off in the long run, I feel. I mean, if they can go to late game, and it seems like this one is going to go the distance for the time being, we're only five total towers taken in this game. And, you know, Giants, they've had some scary engage, too. And it's it's not all just on some of the tools that they had in the Champions Kit. You look at that Shirelia's Reverie picked up by Nuxalot. Yeah. That guy is going to be able to run marathons in the blink of an eye. Giants trying to bait near the brush, and here comes Mesta Rocket. Whoa, ho, ho. That was close, and here comes Joko getting the Glacial Prison back on out. Memento is nearly taken down to zero, but Giants don't have the damage to finish the job. The teleport's going to complete, and it is an absolute bloodbath in the mid. A one-for-one one trade, but we're not done yet. Ruin takes down North Garen. Oh. Betsy goes in for the second win, but wishes he didn't. Rocket all over the place, going straight back in for that fight. They pick up both Ruin and Joko, but I think they're a little bit too low to threaten a Baron attempt at the moment. They should just get this mid lane turret, but still be very, very happy with that success. Ooh, baby, two kills to one. Rocket finally are going to be able to fire down the mid turret. It's going to be hard for them to take down the Baron, especially with how much vision is there for Giants. So let's just take a look at the replay. I, I, there are 10 flashes up right now. All 10 flashes were used in this fight. The engage from Blank at the beginning is a little bit off, and then Memento gets blasted, but he uses the ultimate and the flash to then escape from the fight. That lets the re-engage come in. PQ with the flash forward does so much damage. The bot lane from Rocket is completely zoned out of the rest of the fight, and Rockets will not relent. No, they won't. So they, once again, come up with a slightly better fight off of what could have been a very, very bad they situation. They did a lot more again, damage. <laughs> yes, they did. And, and I do want to put out a, a big uh, congrats to the Aatrox. Prophet was really mixing it up there in the mid, but of course, also HeQ coming up big with this Vladimir. Giants, however, despite losing the fight, maintain the vision around the Baron Pit. Maintain a presence around the Baron Pit. And they're not giving up on any objectives. Yeah, we do have to remember again, all the summoner spells have been blown except one flash on Joko. I did miss that. But now it means that this pick comp, I feel like, for Giants becomes even that much stronger. Because if they can find just one bubble, just one ultimate there out of Joko, they can blow someone up immediately. It's squishy members, too, on the side of Rocket. Yeah. Like, that's the flip side of having all these carries, all these damage dealers, is people can get exploded. Yeah, and, and not having a tank makes it much more difficult to actually get vision in the enemy jungle because all of a sudden you have to face check yourself into an area where you don't know if there's five people sitting in that brush trying to blow you up. That's what happened to Prophet earlier in this game, and it certainly could happen again as long as Giants are able to skirt around the fog war because right now Rocket are doing such a good job of putting down the deep vision to keep themselves safe. Yeah, kudos to both teams actually doing all they can to make sure that this Baron Pit is not going to go blind for either of them. And Do you see all those control ones? That was yeah. crazy. I mean, take note, Solo Q. <laughs> this is exactly how you win games. They immediately put two down in the same place, and they're like, guys, guys, deliver them everywhere. <laughs> hey, man, it takes twice as long to clear. If it's one guy, you can go and kill him. 
know exactly what he's doing. Nuke Slot's going to be able to clear one out the back of the pit. Now, there is that smart uh, ward place just outside as well. So Rockets still have some vision of the Baron pit. And no team really wants to commit to trying to bait it. Yeah, right now, Rocket have an opportunity to get control back over the jungle because Prophet shoved out that bottom lane. He's now rotating on up, and there's no teleport here on Ruin. So while they're not going to be able to start off the Baron buff, Giants have to play very, very respectfully because Prophet has the advantage in the side lane and will always be the first one to rotate up. And they see Prophet actually moving towards the mid. They try to collapse on him right now. He might actually Aww. go down, but the Dark Flight keeps him alive. Nukes a lot. Okay. Goes for the quickness, pulls him back in with a charm, and they dump everything on him. Betsy blows him up, and Rocket. They scatter. Is that a rerun? I think I've seen that episode before. Prophet trying to group up with the rest of his team. Oh, oh that one's new. Hello. OK. You thought it was a rerun, dude. This was a sequel. Yeah, that's a, the new and improved Giants after the initial pick. Now, do they go over towards this Baron? They have to. Memento is back in base. But look at this. Blink is on the flank. Rocket could look to fight 3v5. Let's see if Rocket can make it happen. It's going to be a little tough without Prophet, but that Baron is already down to half a health bar. Here oh, comes Norse Garen for collapse around Here we the go. Sleepy Trouble Bubble, but he's going to get out of it just in time. And there's a Vanguard Norse Garen. Tag in Norse Garen. He's not able to find anybody with his ultimate, but he does scare Giants off the Baron. Giants playing very tentatively around that objective. They were not willing to full commit for the team fight, even though I think they really could have. But now they all have to go ahead, get a reset off. And with Prophet's teleport coming up, this gives Rocket a good opportunity to go in. Uh, speaking of going in, Memento, he wanted Nuke Slot. Remember, he doesn't That's have a, a teleport. Excuse me, he doesn't have his ultimate. TP's coming in for Prophet. Decides he doesn't need to chase on this one, but is this finally going to be the start of the Baron? This I is the first Baron. It's 31 and a half minutes, Ender, in this meta. They're trying to find the pick here. Nuke Slot. Yep. Oh, next deck ultimatum. Nowhere for him to go. Trapped in there with Gromp in tow as well. And down he goes. The rest of Giants, it's their turn to turn tail. That's the issue. Giants left the pit, lost all control over this objective. But still, rock at it. I feel like we've seen a couple of throws before around this objective. They're not going for the Baron. Instead, they're just going to pick up their uh, their belongings in the jungle, the red buff, and set up for their next attempt. Ruin got dangerously close to getting caught for just a second, but he was also running it down mid, and I wonder if he forced Rocket to uh, basically have their bluff called there, backed away, make sure they weren't going to take any more damage. We know what Jax can do <laughs> when he's left unopposed on some towers. Yeah, and even more than just the Jax in the mid lane, the side lane's really working against Rocket there, but this is the pick. There's no flash on Nukes a lot. He actually survives for a pretty long time, oh, but the Grom. Prophet and Memento doing too much damage, maybe to easily take him down. All right, so it, it's definitely been a lot of crazy back and forth, but for all of these fights that everyone's been involved in, we've seen one, two, maybe three kills go down. Oh, yeah. I'm actually very impressed with how the teams have been able to disengage, considering you've got a pick comp on one side and four carries on the other. Yeah, there's definitely been a whole lot of restraint. There's also a decent amount of disengage. I'll say that a little bit tentatively, because you have you know abilities like the Solar from Norskaren that they can use to try and run away, and there's a lot of beefy members on the side of Rocket, so they don't have to necessarily fully commit, but it's still a much lower kill game than you would have anticipated with Rocket versus, versus Giants. Yeah, I mean, what, what do you call it, like, uh, like control, or more like, you know, just apprehension about fully committing to the fight. Maybe that's about to change. As you just pointed out, Steelback has the Infinity Edge. So there's that three item spike on the Zaya. Here we Let's go. See if he gets to use it. Nukes a lot, tries to get the knock up on a heat cube, but he flashes pool as well. And he's out of there. That's a lot spent just to try and take down the Vladimir, but Giants realize that there's also a push going down on the side lane. Blank leading the charge with the minions on this tower. Should be able to fire it down with just a couple of auto attacks. Yep, very easy pickup for him, but the rest of Giants are trying to make a play in the jungle. There's no flash on Hiku. That's the second time Sunuk's line is traded. And they've got the Glacial Prison. Memento, though, he should be able oh, to get back to back. Holy moly, that's damage. Oh. That was Memento aggressive, but Blank, he's still in the base. They're losing this tower. They have to make a play, or they're just going to lose an inhibitor. Giants have to go for it here. They are going to try to brute force down the tower in the mid. They should be able to do it, and the rest of Rocket are unable to respond. However, the trade is real here. Blank is not far behind. Inhibitor already fired down, but it's going to be traded. Yeah, and the rest of Rocket have to stop the recalls. They need some time now for Blank to get this down, but it might actually leave Blank vulnerable as Giants try to collapse towards that top lane. You already see the pings. They're on their way, and there's not much time here for Blank to get out. He's backing because he's self back. He's going to have time. <laughs> he's going to get out. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Well, and even worse for Giants. No, why not? They've given up Put control down of the Baron. vision pit. That is true. Giants have just been sort of run across the map, but I would give them the advantage in the inhibitor trade. Having permanent mid lane priority because you have that mid inhibitor is so, so valuable when this Baron, as an objective, is still on the map. They will be able to control that area uh, most more than likely as long as they're able to get the vision out of here from Rocket. 
comes a quick scuttle take. Rocket do secure that level of vision, and they should be able to clear it up. Still, I'm very impressed with the fact that Rocket were able to make uh, something out of nothing. Lemonade, as it were, out of the lemons that were given to them by Giants Gaming. So it's going to be a little bit difficult for Ruin to keep the side lane pushed against the Super Minions. If they keep him on permanent cleanup duty, I don't know. Because everyone's back in mid lane once again, Ender. It's the NA Ram. We're getting a team fight potentially as the Trellias was popped from Nuke Slot. Again, there's no flash on the Rakan, so maybe a little bit more difficult for him to find that perfect engage. But all they have to do is land a bubble over the wall, and they're going to be rocking and rolling. Betsy has had some real close ones this game. They've been uh, a pixel, a Teemo away from some of the Rocket members, but now okay. it is time to start up the Baron. It's going pretty low. There's a Sleepy There's Trouble. There's no Momento, actually. On the Aatrox. Yeah, Rocket are sniffing around, but they won't be able to win a Smite fight anytime soon, but it looks They're like bursting. Nuke Slot's keeping him busy right now, and he might give his life for the cause. Prophet takes him down. The Baron gets secured. Steelback has it, but that's four members. Will they be able to live after this is all said and done? Looks like Blank is going to get his Guardian Angel pop, but that's a double Steel kill. Back. Profit. If they clean up house, they won't need to worry about that Baron buff. There's two more. Steelback is going to take down North Scare in the meantime, but I don't know if he's going to get out alive. There's the Hextech oh. Ultimatum. Betsy onto Memento. Guardian Angel pop. Steel that's back. a double kill. Steelback, last man standing. What can he's he do? Got it's it. one. Let's he's go. Got it. Oh, Steelback. He's got it, but he can't take down Memento. Oh, my God. Steelback is popping off in that team fight. Fantastic performance, but the base is open from Giants. Yeah, nobody's left alive. Nuke Slot's got seven seconds, and yes, Steelback had an incredible outplay there, but it was just too many members, and Rocket, they look like they're going to close this one out. They've got it. There's still 30, 15 seconds on Jungle. He's the next one, but that's one turret already down. Nuke Slot cannot do anything against HeQ and Memento. This is going to be it. Oh. Despite the fact that Steelback had a master performance, Rocket will take the victory at 36 and a half. Absolutely incredible. Steelback looked like he had it, but it's Memento who comes out on top at the end, on top of that Nexus for the win. Big smile on the face of Memento. He knows they didn't have to secure the Baron. All they had to do was win the fight. Not even close, baby. And win it, they did. <laughs> Very Woo. good performance out of them. And it was looking rough because Giants, they made the decisive call to take down that Baron. They got the Baron. Steelback actually got the last hit on the Baron. And he got two kills. And he got two like kills one at v3. the end. But it was, it was EQ that was leaving the fight and running straight for the base while everything else was happening. And they got in the end, man. Yeah. Rock out. Well deserved for this team to hang tough. It was such a back and forth game. And, and all credit to Giants Gaming because this did not look like week one, week two Giants that were struggling to survive the early game, that were not sure of what to do. They were decisive. They made the plays. The only problem was in that final instance, it was the wrong one. Yeah, it was really it was really good, I think, to see Giants changing it up a little bit in the draft, putting much more power on the Steelback and Sir Nukes a lot in the bottom lane and looked good for a long, long time, but Rocket were the better team on the deck. They certainly were. They improved now to three and two. And once again, Memento has a monster performance. There were so many threats on this team. There were so many question marks as to who was going to be the big player stepping up. But Memento in a carry role, he's able to do it. So let's take a look at how everything broke down. And yeah, uh, that gold graph kind of sums up my feelings. There was a lot of uh, 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 it over was, and over. Yeah, it was up and down for uh, for quite a while there in the mid game. But I mean, Memento, you talked about him 505 on that Camille. He was super active in the early game. And then it slowed down a bit, but it was still all these explosive team fights around the mid that were so fun to watch because they kept going different directions and we never knew who was going to win in the end. Now, speaking of some of those fights that went on for a while, we got to go ahead and take a look one more time at that final fight brought to you, or Brian Warren the Baron is brought to you by Ace of Predator. Let's just roll it out. I want to see that again. This is just crazy because Giants have five members in the pit. There's only three here at the start from Rock at. Unfortunately, Sir Nukes a lot. He donates his life to guarantee by the Baron, but that meant there wasn't the team fight power quite there from the rest of Giants. Betsy and Steelback doing such a good job of kiting through this fight, but as soon as their front line goes down, it looks so, so dire. There's four members of Rocket. Actually, there's when Hiku leaves. He's like, you guys got this, right? It was a lot closer uh, than uh, he maybe would have anticipated. You know, I want to give the MVP to oh, uh, Guardian oh, oh. Angels in that one, but Steelback, he earns an honorable mention. Nearly found and it he got in the, the end. Snipe. That was but sick. Memento, he just did it just a little bit better. And, you know, I, I feel like this kind of brings us to the question. Naturally, after all that said and done, if you saw a performer that stood out, please be sure to give us your player of the game on your on our Twitter poll at LA Sports. Now, your choices are Memento, Blank, and Profit. I, I mean, I want to say Memento because of the end of that one, but, um, but you know, it, 
anybody could take it. Anybody could yeah. take anybody it. Should, I, I don't want to anchor you know? any of the viewers yeah. and give them my own opinion. I want this to be a fair fight because sometimes the casters, they talk and say, oh, this guy should be MVP. Well, who do you think the people are going to vote for? Probably that guy. And that's yeah, just we have not a lot there. of influence. Well, don't listen to us. Why don't you guys listen to your own hearts and see now after the break, Vettius and Jarge will give you the key to Schalke's hopes of taking down Misfits. I'll give you a hint. It involves amazing. More on that in a couple of minutes. In ruin. 